Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is Dava with Ali and I am Ali and today we're going to talk a little bit about um, tokens and also creating a new class and getting into more detail and yeah, repeat after me, programming comes to me easily and effortlessly. So um, I well, let me introduce myself. I'm Ali. I'm a software developer. I have been working in IT since 2004. I have multiple degrees in technology and yeah, let me know if you need to know more. So we're going to create a new class today. We're going to look at our integrated development environment and do it here, from here. I'm going to say new and you see you can say file new project example or other or we can go down here to our project explorer simply right click on source and go new and you will have multiple options project annotation annotation comes in very handy for enterprise edition we're looking at core java so it's just looking at the main core structure of the language which i spoke a little bit about last week so we have our java development kit which is basically the equivalent of a dictionary in a regular language. You have all these words with meanings and they do stuff and they mean stuff in other languages. So it, within a programming language, you have this as well. Let's take a look at that first. We're going to look at Java or E. So the Java runtime environment, I have it set to 11, which is not so relatively, it's relatively new. It has all the new features. As the language evolves, there are new things that are added, but just for demonstration purposes, this is fine to do with the latest and greatest version right now. So we have our Java and we also have our Java base here. And if you look at Java base, we have Java Lang, and that's our language that we use that has every single class within all of Java uses java.lang. It automatically inherits java.lang. So basically, anytime that you use any of the keywords within Java, it automatically knows that it's using all of this, which is really cool. So look at here, we've got our little bytecode symbol and our class, and then we have all our things. So you can actually look up, it's like looking up the dictionary. You can look up all of these things across all of java.lang and that's basically what we're looking at across all of java we're going to look at all of these things so not all of them but a lot so let's go back down to our source file let's minimize this minimize that now how we set our java development kit is actually through our run configuration which we can do from here and go run configurations here and we can set different java runtime environments based on particular um run like environments that we want to run different programs that we want to run so we can have one program that we've developed in java 11 another with java 14 another with another version and so on and you can look up your installed alternatives here um but for the moment let's just stick with this one and we're going to go to our source folder our package test package right click new class and we're going to say um token test now Naming conventions is a whole other thing. We don't normally want to name our class something to do with test because later on we'll see that we have folders that are specifically for running test. This is just for demonstration purposes. I will say one thing with naming conventions within Java that's really important is that all classes start with a capital letter. If I, for instance, start this with a lowercase, it will automatically tell me up here type name is discouraged. By convention, Java type names usually start with an uppercase letter. A key factor in programming is patience. <laughs> patience, harnessing your patience. And when you go through harnessing your patience, you will go through some of these things and you'll just need to read through every single thing step by step. We are going to um, generate our method stub here and inherited abstract comments. And do we want to generate comments? Yes, we do. And finish. And now 
we have most of our programming um, class already in shape, tip top shape. If I look here, there's no imported packages. It's just within this particular package so far. So if, if there were imported packages, it would, it would have the keyword import. So let's call this token test. What are we going to do now here? We are going to say int n equals two. We have what's called a local variable because it's within a local part of the program, which is it's within just one section. Now we're going to go system dot out dot and the same as our very, very first time that we had a look at this, we wanted to go print ln or print f because print ln is printing a new line, print f is going to be formatted. Um, that's what the f stands for. So we're going to say quadrant and we're going to have um, plus, ooh, plus n and bye bye n and closing our comments. Now to do auto generated stuff. Now, as we're in the debug area, <laughs> I can easily double tap and it will allow me to put a line breakpoint in this. Then I can use my debug tool. So see this little bug here. This, is, this little bug here is gonna debug it for me. Now, I press that. I saved it before I did that. So you can see over here, we've got our no method return value. So there's nothing that comes back from it. Our arguments are string 0, 19. That's okay. We don't need to worry about that just yet. But our variable is called n and the value is 2. Now we also have our little step functions, step into and step over. Let's step into it and you'll see loads of things happening because it'll bring us to our class loader. It's going to bring us to all these things. Let's step over that, step over that, step over that. And it brings us back and we're still at n is equal to two over here. So if we watch this, this might change and step over. And we have quadrant four is written down here. Let me put a space here. Um, and we also want to print out, let's let's do a little print out here of, let's say one more. Plus is going to be a, a key factor in this is that plus is our string um, part of quadrant so it's actually just appending a string to it. That's really important. So if I was to use another, if I was to try and do a calculation, it wouldn't work. What it's doing here is actually just appending our string to our existing string. So we don't need to worry about the calculations or anything like that. And so if I debug this again, it's okay. But if I say, and then if I remove this one, disable breakpoint, I just right clicked there to disable it. I'm gonna maybe do another one here, disable this one. And I'm gonna step over them. Okay. Because it's within our system out print LN, it just keeps it the same. So then I say, unless I assign it down here, now let's let's look at this. Now we want to do it one more time. Yes, we do. And we're going to step over and look. It's gone yellow <laughs> and it's switched from two to four. Ta -da! Okay, one second, we're going to look at tokens now. So, um, tokens are 
basically parts of the grammar that are recognized within the lexicon of the language. So within every language, the one that I'm speaking right now in English, we have grammar, which are the rules, which is called syntax within Java. And then we have semantic, which is the meaning of what we bestow upon these words that we use in our beautiful language. And then we have, of course, um, and it, bit, bit by bit by bit. <laughs> um, so step by step, then it goes down to the bytecode. So the compiler, the Java compiler, which we mentioned in the previous video, as we need to compile our code and then we run our code. So the compiler recognizes all of our tokens and it recognizes the order and the sequence that they are in um, so that it can compile the code itself. So within that then, we have 12 different tokens within Java. So we've already seen some so far. So we have our semicolon. It's recognized within Java. So that's the end of every statement. We have a semicolon. We have our open brackets and our closed brackets are lovely things here. When I highlighted in my integrated development environment, Eclipse that, that I'm using here, but anybody can use NetBeans, BlueJ, um, IntelliJ or other ones that are available for Java compiling. Um, these are, are really nice because you can just highlight one and it highlights the, the matcher. Um, I'm going to just stop the program. Yeah, so if I highlight one, you can see that it highlights the matcher. Same with this one. And let me take away that one. So we also have our square brackets and our round brackets. So if we go here we've got our curly brackets or our parentheses in American English, our square brackets. Then we also have our round brackets that are available as well um, within that. So we follow within Java, we always follow BIMDAS. Other people follow um, other ways to pronounce the same thing. So um, BIMDAS being brackets, um, indices, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction as our order of precedence. However, we're not going to cover that today. We're just looking at tokens. So we also have this thing here, which we'll come to way, way later. Um, we also have one with oh, three dots. I should say three. Oh, if you just keep pressing dots, actually it auto-completes auto sometimes. <laughs> Um, so if you're within, let's say, brackets, you can have three, three dots as well. Let's not do that. Um, and we also have an at. I've just written them down, written some down here as well. So I'm just looking at them. And we also have one comma and one dot as well. So within that, then it's basically always used within. ASCII as well. So ASCII is our way of translating a lot of the things within Java itself. So we said through ASCII. So basically Java has a thing called Unicode and then that's recognized within um, Java itself as the language to be translated down step by step down to the bytecode and step by step down into the computer. So we also have um, what's important to know is that we have variables, consonants, um, methods, classes and our interfaces and they're all identified by these specific terms throughout Java. So for instance we already know package is a term public class is a term, public static void is a term. Now we've just spoken about tokens that are used, for instance, our separators, tokens. We have um, different meanings that are given throughout the language to be identified by the computer itself. And then we use that throughout. So we have our keywords then, um, which are public, private, static, void, and there's a number of different keywords that are used throughout and different types of variables that are used throughout as well. And all of those then are based on these things called tokens. So we can say in this particular example, we have an identifier token, we have keyword tokens, we have literal tokens, 
um, we have operator tokens and we also have separator tokens, all just within this one particular program itself. So our keyword tokens being our public class, public static void, all of the colored, it's all colored in, all colored in, all of those things. Um, our literal then would be our, um, what we just put into inverted, um, inverted com, um, quotation marks even and then we also have our operators which we've used here and um, then we have our separators which we've also used here and here um, and throughout and then we also have um, our general um, identifiers across the way as well so that's it for today uh, thank you so much for watching so programming comes to me easily and effortlessly programming comes to me easily and effortlessly programming comes to me easily and effortlessly i'm so happy you're joining me with this journey so that is tokens we will continue again next week and thank you so much for watching please do like share and subscribe and comment below if you have any questions okay thanks bye